Welcome to the Vision Webinar Series on Science Content and Teaching Strategies in the Context of the Most Essential Learning Competencies for Grade 4 Science. I'm Ma'am Miraflor B. Peralta, Teacher 2 of Samal National High School, Maine. Our competency is to compare and contrast the characteristics of different types of soil. So are you ready to listen? Let's begin! Have you been to the Banawe rice terraces? The rice fields that comprise the terraces were carved by the Ipugaos with their hands. The terraces follow the natural contours of the mountain. Because of this, parts of Banawe rice terraces are recognized by the UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. The said terraces are suitable for farming because of their fertile soil. In our today's lesson, we will learn more about the different types of soil and their suitability for plant growth. Soil is everywhere. In any place you go, soil is present. It is in the river banks, in rice fields, in gardens, and even under the sea. Soil is not only important in farming and gardening, it also serves as habitat for various organisms. Soil is the top layer of Earth's surface. It is made up of organic matter, contains minerals, nutrients, liquid, and gases. How is soil formed? Soil is formed through the process of rock weathering. Weathering is the breakdown of rocks into smaller particles when in contact with water, air, or living organisms. Weathering may be mechanical and chemical. Mechanical weathering is the breaking down of rocks into pieces without changing its chemical composition. No new substance is formed. While chemical weathering is the breaking down of rocks as a result of a chemical reaction and it leads to formation of a new substance. Different factors break rocks apart. These factors are called agents of weathering. How do living things affect weathering? Plants, people, animals can weather rocks. Some plant roots grow into rocks. As the root grow, they push against rocks and concrete that can lead to fracture. After some time, the rock cracks open. This eventually breaks rocks into pieces. Animals contribute to weathering too. When animals scratch rocks with their bodies, claws or hooves, rocks break and weathering apart. Some animals like earthworms and some insects burrow in the ground. This loosens and breaks rocks apart in the soil. Human activities like farming also break rocks. Heavy equipment and machines smash rocks to break them apart. In chemical weathering, rocks and minerals are reacting to acid, oxygen, carbon, and water. And in living things, when plants and animals die and decay, they are broken down by decomposers such as bacteria. Bacteria secrete acids that react with minerals found in rocks. The chemical reaction causes rocks to break into pieces. To truly understand chemical weathering and how it works, we need to look at examples of the different types of chemical weathering. First is carbonation. When rain goes through the air and into the ground, it grabs carbon dioxide, creating carbonic acid. This weak acid reacts with a calcium carbonate in stone when it seeps into the rocks. Second is oxidation. It occurs when free oxygen combines chemically with metallic elements like iron. Third is hydration. Hydration is a type of chemical weathering where water reacts chemically with the rocks, modifying its chemical structure. Fourth is hydrolysis. When rocks sit in water for extended period of time, they begin to break down and have a clay-like texture. Acid rain is water with sulfuric and nitric acids from the burning of coal and fossil fuels, along with a volcano eruption. The acid creates a reaction when they hit stone, causing the surface to wear and the composition to soften. 
Let's look at the different type of soil now that we have learned how they were formed. Soil varies from place to place. Some soil may be sand, silt, clay, and loam. How are they different from each other? Let us study the table. There are three soil particles, the sand, silt, and the clay. Some particle is big. The size range from 2 to 0.5 mm. Its individual grains can be seen with a naked eye, but it does not hold water. Its texture is rough due to the presence of coarse grain and it is gritty, while the seal has a medium size. Its size range from 0.05 to 0.002 mm. The individual grains of silt cannot be seen with the naked eye. Grains are observable using magnifying glass. It can hold minimal amount of water and it is a powder like in texture. And last is the clay. It is small. Its size is less than 0.002 mm. The individual grains of clay cannot be seen with a naked eye, but it holds much water. Its texture, grains cannot be felt, and it is sticky. Let us proceed to learn more about soil type. Which of these plants grows on sandy soil, silty soil, clay soil? Sandy soil is mostly found on beaches and seashore. It is the result of weathering and disintegration of the variety of rocks such as granite, limestone, and quartz. Sandy soil has a coarse texture. This implies that it has low water retention ability. Coconut trees and cactus are commonly grown on this sandy soil. Silt soil is a granular material made up of rock and mineral particles that are larger than clay but smaller than sand. Silt is created when rock is eroded or worn away by water and ice. As flowing water transports tiny rock fragments, they scrape against the sides and bottoms of the stream bed chipping away more rock. Another type of soil is the clay soil. It is composed of a very small particles of weathered rock. It has poor water drainage. This means that water is absorbed slowly and is retained for a long time. The water clog in the soil limits the plant roots from getting oxygen. During rainy season, clay soil becomes very wet. Such conditions make it hard for plant to grow. During dry season, water evaporates making the soil dry and hard and causes plant to wither and die. In small amounts, clay soil is necessary to make good soil. Plants with tough roots grow well in clay. The roots break off tough clay soils. Some plants that thrive well in this kind of soil include potato, cabbage, grass, and rice. The last type of soil is the loam soil. Loam soil is a soil mixture that has a good amount of sand, silt, and clay. It is the best soil for growing plants. In this mixture, the clay and silt helps retain the moisture while the sand keeps the soil from compacting too much. Loam soil also contains humus. Humus is made up of decayed plants and animals matter that helps make the soil fertile. Bamboo, ornamental plants such as roses, vegetable, and fruits grow on loam soil. That's it for the soil kinds. I hope you gain some insight. I want to conclude this discussion with Dr. Charles E. Kellogg's 
quotations. All life depends upon the soil. There can be no life without soil and no soil without life. They have evolved together. Thank you for listening. God bless.